Hi, I'm Dr. Magreet Wibbeling, midwife specialist and your host of the Birth and Baby Show, brought to you by Sister Lillian Center and Sensitive Midwifery. We empower moms and midwives to have the best birthing and parenting experience through natural, physiological and intuitive care, resulting in birth and baby advice you can trust. Hi everyone. I'm so excited about this series that we're working on when things don't go as planned because that is the reality as much as we prepare for our perfect birth stories things do go sometimes haywire and in today's uh, episode we will be talking about a premature labor and birth um, very unexpected uh, sequence of events for mommy Jessica but which has agreed to share her story. Jessica Cockburn, she's a lecturer at Grahamstown University, Rhodes University, and she's a brand new mom, and she's got a very, very interesting story to share that you will absolutely love, and also with very important messages to take home. Hi, Jessica. Thank you so much for being here with us in the show. This episode is brought to you by Baby City, our preferred baby store. Well, this is a one-stop shop where you can get all your baby products and beautiful baby brands um, at the same place for very affordable prices. Go to babycity.zo.za for your online shopping or go visit a baby store. They are all over the country and you will also be able to get your antenatal checkups done. Hi, Margret. Thank you very much for this. Um, thank you very much for this opportunity to share our um, birth story and our story of having a premature baby. Yeah. Uh, my name is Jessica and I'm a first time mom and we had, things went unexpectedly for us with our first baby. Right. Well, I just, so, I'm so glad that you're here with me and that you're wanting to share with us and with the audience, because I know you've got lots of important messages to share. So tell us a bit more about yourself and how it all unfolded for you. Okay. Yeah, so I live in the Eastern Cape in Makanda, previously known as Grahamstown. Mm -hmm. um, we've been living here for on and off for about um, almost six or seven years. Love the Eastern Cape. Um, we love, yeah, we love what this province has to offer in terms of beautiful nature and outdoor experiences. And um, I work at the university. I'm an environmental science lecturer at Rhodes University. Awesome. And I'm very passionate about environmental issues, about social justice issues, about development issues. And um, yeah, really um, happy to be here and now in this place and doing this kind of work. Um, so we, um, I fell pregnant in September last year, um, 2021, and our baby was due in June um, this year, 2022. And I had big plans for a natural birth. I was really excited about the, the prospect of a natural birth of, um, yeah, I really enjoyed my pregnancy. I had a really happy, comfortable, healthy pregnancy and was making, yeah, big plans for a natural birth. Um, everyone always tells you that, you know, things don't always go the way you plan, but you don't think you're going to be the one <laughs> right. where things don't go. According to plan, yeah. So right. that's kind of the lead into to the story. Yes. So what did you plan and what happened? <laughs> yeah. So I um yeah, I, I did a lot of reading about natural birth. I read Ina May Gaskin's book, um, and I read the hypnobirthing book. We were busy doing a hypnobirthing online course and I was busy making the decision together with my husband about whether we would have our natural birth in the hospital or natural birth in a home birth environment. Where we live, unfortunately, there isn't a good backup hospital. So we would have had to have our home birth in another person's home or in a guest house or something in Port Elizabeth, Rebecca. So we decide, we were going to decide between um, birth in a kind of birth room or birth center type thing or in the birth hospital. Oh, sorry, in the hospital. Mm. So I was already seeing an obstetrician at the hospital and we were we had a really good relationship with her and we were really comfortable with her. But we felt that like we might, we might, I, it's my, myself probably more than my husband felt like a home birth setting was probably more conducive to us having the birth that we wanted, a natural birth, a birth where I felt really involved and empowered, a birth where I felt that 
the decisions were made collectively because so much of what I'd read had painted the hospital birth situation in quite a negative light in terms of natural birth and the way in which obstetricians favor caesareans at high rates of caesareans. So, yeah, we hadn't quite made the decision um, when our baby arrived really early. <laughs> so we were still kind of figuring things out. Um, yeah. So he arrived on the 13th of April, which is 10 weeks early. Wow. Um, I feel like he arrived as maybe not even the right word to use. He was removed on the 13th of April. Um, yeah, so that we were still busy making plans. We hadn't even finished our plans. <laughs> sure. Um, I'm just going to have a sip of tea before I dive into that day. <laughs> yes, go for it. You probably need it. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, so on the 13th of April, I started experiencing quite sudden abdominal pains in the morning at around 10. Um, just suddenly my, my kind of lower abdomen was really, really sore. I'd been at a Pilates class and I, I sometimes felt a bit strained after Pilates, but not sore, but I thought maybe it's just the same thing and it's just gone a bit extreme. But it just it just stayed there and it just got super intense super quickly and then it was just it just wouldn't go away and it was unbearable it was really really uncomfortable so I went home um I've called my husband I said I'm not feeling well um I need yeah we need to do something here so then we got chatting on whatsapp to um, our midwife who was on hand to chat to us and help us think about what's going on she asked me some important questions she asked whether I could still feel the baby moving and I said that I couldn't, and it was hard for me to actually, in retrospect, I think um, that maybe there may have been fetal movement, but I could only feel the pain. The pain was so overwhelming that mm -hmm. I couldn't really feel anything else. Anyway, so I tried a hot bath, I tried Panado, I tried some tea, I tried deep breathing, I tried all the things that one can safely do when one's in pain and pregnant, um, and nothing was really working. Um, I laid down on the bed, I lay on the couch, yeah, in the bath. It was just really sore. So then it got to the point we'd been going on for about two hours and the midwife had said that I could come and see her in the afternoon. She had an opening at her practice and we could do the, put the baby monitor thing on and she could check baby's heart rate. Um, but then I phoned the, the obstetrician, gynecologist in Port Elizabeth and I explained to her what was going on. She put, First I spoke to her nurse and the nurse put me through to her. She said, I'm not happy with how you're sounding. I want you to speak to the doctor. And then she said, she asked the same questions. Um, what kind of pain is it? And I said, it's this constant pain. And um, spoke about, yeah, the fetal movement. Like I hadn't felt any baby movement. And she said, I think you should come through to the knee. Yeah. And there was this weird moment where I could have stayed to see the midwife in the afternoon <laughs> or go drive to PE. And honestly, the car drive, the thought of the car drive was really off-putting because of how much pain I was in. But the um, gynae said, "I need you, might, I, like you need to come. I want you yeah. to come." She insisted, so you know, I was like, "Okay, fine, I'm coming." The doctor says, "Let's go, let's go." So we packed our bags and we went. Um, and that was now like midday. We got there at around two, I think. Um, we got into the labor ward and they put me up on the bed and put the that baby monitor thing on my tummy and quickly we established baby's heart rate was there and he was fine so that was a huge relief sure. um, that he was fine and obviously there was something going on but he was still fine so that was really really good news and then they said that we just needed to wait for the guy because she was still busy with some other patients and that she would come through when she was ready so then I waited another excruciating hour or so of this pain that was just so like horrible and like wouldn't go away and it's so funny, as we were lying there, as I was lying there, my husband was with me, I was just commenting on, oh, this labor wood actually looks quite nice. And I noticed there was a bath in the bathroom, oh, like quite a nice place to have a baby actually under Pilates ball. And I chatted to the midwife who had received us. She was sitting with me and I was asking her about births there and like, do they support natural birth? And she said, yes, they do. They're very proud of their natural birthing mummies and they do a lot they, that they do a lot to support their natural birthing mommy so I was like wow this is sounding really good maybe I can have my baby in this hospital not thinking <laughs> that I was going to have my baby in the hospital but in a very different way so yeah then the gynae came through about an hour later 
And she did an examination and she checked the, the printout from the baby monitor thing. I keep calling it the baby monitor. I don't know what that machine is called. Don't worry. It's a CTG no, and machine. She, thank you. The CTG <laughs> machine. Um, I didn't expect to have to deal with things like that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, she checked the printer out and she said she's quite happy with what's going on with the baby, but there's obviously something else going on. And she said, I don't like what's going on here. Yeah. So she said, I'm going to get the ultrascan, uh, ultrasound machine out. So they wheeled that thing in and she got it out and she scanned. She said, baby's position is fine. And then she stopped on the side of my <clears throat> abdomen and she looked. She had big eyes and she said, you've got an abruption. I didn't even know what that was. No idea. And she said, we're going to do an emergency C-section. You and your baby's lives are at risk. And this is the best thing for both of you. Mm. I'm going to put you under general anesthetic. Mm. Abby, you better go downstairs and admit your wife. You're going to go to theater and we'll wow. see you in theater. And from then on, things went super, super, super fast. I was yeah. just like, yeah, mm. super, super fast. Yeah, so yeah. that was, she came in at about four. Jonah was born at 21 past four. So wow. from when she came in to wow. examine me to his birth was 20 minutes, basically. Wow, we, crazy. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So let me take a breath there and see if you want to, yeah, I can carry yeah. on or if you want me to. Yeah, yeah no, let's, let's, let's um, do that. Um, so just, I think, for clarification for the listeners, what an app show is. So your placenta was starting to come loose, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah. Also so it was, it showed up. Yeah. So I just wanted to say it showed up as a big dark patch, like a blood patch. clot on the scan. Yeah. Yeah. And that also explains your excruciating pain to me instantly because a perhaps show is excruciating pain. It's not that come and go pain. It's a continuous, really anal pain, right? Is that what you experienced? Yeah, sure. So that was, that was very, very sad and a lot to deal with in a very short time. So how did you, how did you deal with all of that? Yeah, so um, let me just quickly finish off until where I remember because then I went under anesthetic and I don't remember anything. But basically oh, yeah, then, general anesthetics. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Uh, I was... Um, yeah, she, the doctor then started ordering people around to prepare stuff, get bloods and get steroids for the baby and undress me and stuff was just happening super fast. Um, the other doctor who was helping her wheeled me to the theatre and it was, I was quite, I didn't really know what was going on. I was just following the process that yeah. was now completely in her hands. Like I said, we had a good relationship with her. I trusted her. I felt that she was going to do the right thing mm. and that she would do what was best for us and that she would do it well. Um, yeah, but I didn't realize really how risky things were until we got into the lift with the other doctor and he was like jamming the lift buttons like they do in the movies. Like, yeah. And I was like, wow, okay. It's things are hectic. This doctor's yeah. like freaking out. And <laughs> obviously this is serious. Yeah. And all I could do then, and it's interesting, I was in this very like clinical hospital setting. All I could think of doing was my breathing, which was kind of the hypnobirthing breathing which had come to me and like okay mm. it's gotta breathe <laughs> yeah so i breathed and breathed and breathed until i breathed in the anesthetic with the mask and that was it oh, you was went. Fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so this is where the first hard oh boy sorry talking about your story yeah mm -hmm. sorry. very cool <laughs> first mm. Oh, miracle baby, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, one of the first very hard things for me to process out of all of this, other than the shock, which was huge, but the first loss, I think, was the fact that I felt completely absent from the birth. Yeah. I was so unconscious. My body was there, but I wasn't there at all yeah. in mind. Um, so that's been a very hard thing to just accept. And it, it had to be that way because that's what the doctor just decided was the safest for everybody mm. and like I say I trust her but it was still hard because I had envisaged a completely involved birth yeah. <laughs> so that's very very hectic mm. um to accept um and that my husband also missed most of it because he was at the admissions at the hospital oh. so baby was born into the hands of doctors and nurses who did their best for him but his parents were there um, oh. and that's been a very hard thing 
just accept he's fine now and he was fine and yeah yeah but that was a little bit tough of course yeah yeah, um, yeah. Sure. and then off he went to the NICU and I went off to the postnatal ward I only saw him 12 hours later I wasn't able to see him until the next day more than 12 hours it was actually like 18 hours Julian was able to see him his dad um, and sent all the pictures but because I was recovering from cesarean, I was, yeah, I couldn't get up and see him. Yeah. They couldn't bring him to me. Um, yeah. That was hard too. But what I want to emphasize at this point before, I know we don't want to talk for too long, but um, just the gratitude I have to the hospital staff because they they know what they're doing yeah. <laughs> with this kind of stuff. This is what they're there for. And yeah. they did a great job and they, they saved our lives and um, the kids, Care we received at the hospital was incredible. And the support at the NICU at the NICU was amazing. Um, no one wants to end up there. No one expects to end up there. But mm. the nurses and the doctors there were really incredible. And we're just really lucky that our baby was healthy. He was born at 1.68 kgs wow. at 30 weeks. So he was very early, but he was quite a good weight and he was healthy and he wasn't in distress. Sure. Well, there was a tiny bit of distress, but they got him out quickly and he was fine. And he responded well to the oxygen. Um, they gave him surfactants to help him to breathe. Mm. Yeah, and he just went from strength to strength. We were in for seven weeks, which was hard and horrible. To drive away from your baby every day for seven weeks is not a nice wow. thing. Yeah. But yeah, here we are and he's doing really great. He's now four and a bit months and almost five kgs and growing and we're breastfeeding which is wonderful mm. yeah things are going really well now wow sure what a story what a story wow <laughs> definitely not what anyone envisioned to happen so there was a lot to deal with and um yeah what a journey well done hey well done um <laughs> yeah so this, yeah, we, we are busy with a series on when things don't go as planned. And it's also um, Prematurity Awareness Month. So your story fits in with both of those themes. Um, yeah, so it's a be beautiful to just have a life, a real life experience. Um, so thank you so much for agreeing to share your story. Um, from all the things you've gone through now, I'm sure you've got so many things burning on your heart that you would love to share with the world out there. And you already did quite a bit. Um, thank you also for pointing out how incredible the hospital was and hospital staff. That's really need to be said. Um, yeah, so that is, that's great. But I'm sure you've got more messages that you'd love to, to share with the world. What would you love to share to mommies, parents out there, parents to be? Much. Okay. Yeah, there's lots to share. Um, I think one of the things I want to emphasize is that I think our, our birth story is a positive birth story, but with a difference. And why I'm saying that is that I think one of the reasons I was so unprepared for the unexpected, difficult birth with complications and a premature baby was that in my preparations for a natural birth, I was purposefully only looking for positive birth stories. I was ignoring um, and not wanting to look at the negative and the things that can go wrong yeah. as part of positive preparation. I mean, that's a lot of the philosophy of natural birth is like think positive, avoid the fear, all of True. that. So I was yeah. completely oblivious to True. what can go wrong. So mm -hmm. one of my messages is that one, we had a really difficult birth experience, but it was positive. Our baby is okay. I'm okay. We were treated really well by the hospital staff. Um, everything went really well, considering it could have gone very differently. So it is a positive story, but it's not a natural birth story. Yeah. I wasn't feeling very empowered or involved, <laughs> but yes. it is positive and it is one that I want to, as you said, to celebrate the role that hospitals and obstetricians play in terms of birth. And yeah just be very grateful for that support. So yeah, I just want to bring this as a version of a positive birth story, even though it's maybe yeah. not the typical. Yeah. Yeah. But I, um, I think to just add on that with every preparation and that's what every healthcare professional and childbirth educator and midwife, they need to know this again, is that birth can be the story and we should, that it's just a reality to empower and inform parents to be about this. So, um, and also that as much as we want our beautiful, healthy 
as Mother Nature intended it to be natural, we um, we need to um, be aware that things can go wrong, and that is where you just need to be on the right place in the right time and have sure to make sure that you have all those. Um, things in place and you had that in place and you could pick up the phone go to your doctor and you saved your baby's life yeah so it is a it's a collaboration exactly and i think that's important to be on the right place yeah and i want to also celebrate the role of our midwife who supported us before like she was on call as well to me yeah and since the birth she's been amazing she's been really really fantastic helping us with breastfeeding all the baby questions and yeah. so the complementarity between the hospital system and the midwifery system i think is also really important to yeah. acknowledge and appreciate yeah yeah beautiful um, i also just want to say something mm. Sorry, no, I wanted it. to just say something about about having a preemie because that was that's kind of the second part of the story, which is a whole nother podcast. I want to yeah, be for sure. What it's like to have a premature baby. Um, it was a huge shock for us as well. We didn't know when when the when the doctor announced that we were having a cesarean. Neither my, my husband and I didn't know whether our baby was viable. We didn't know if he would yeah. survive. So I think for people to know how much incredible knowledge and skills and technology there is to look after premature babies and that we if we're able to access it obviously not everybody can but if you're able to access top-end medical care in this country there is incredible support for premature babies and their families and mm-hmm. um yeah it, it 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 can be okay it doesn't always work out well but yeah we were very lucky and that our baby got good care and that that he he was well looked after and we were well looked after um yeah yeah. So there's lots to learn about that as well as as parents to be for the for what it might mean to have a premature baby. Yes, thank you for pointing that out. And um, what would you love to tell parents that um, about having a premature baby? Some some tips. Uh, I think I think one of my kind of overwhelming lessons was, and this is a hard thing to do in retrospect, but. I felt very disempowered in the NICU as a mom because Mm -hmm. I was completely in shock myself. I was recovering from a cesarean. The doctors and nurses were in charge of my baby. They were looking after him, saving his life. And my husband and I were completely clueless as to what our role is in that situation. Like how, how can we be involved? The obvious thing you do as a mom is to produce breast milk and pump. And that was amazing. I pumped around the clock and I got really good support for that. And that was great. But the actual looking after your baby physically is a very hard thing because in the beginning, we weren't even able to hold him because he was on tubes and machines and wires and monitors and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And it took me a long time to gain enough confidence in that context to kind of take ownership of my baby and go like, this is my baby. And like one of the nurses actually had to tell me like, this is your baby. You're in charge of this baby. You need to start making decisions about what's going on with this baby. And I'm like, yo, thanks for telling me but it's almost too late because I've had to hand him over to you guys because you guys are the experts who are going to keep him alive because I couldn't keep him alive in my body and (laughs) so it's a type it's a fine line to walk like finding that confidence and ownership when you're in the NICU but I encourage parents to try from as early on as possible to engage the nurses and doctors around that is to say like please help me find out what my role is and what can I do and what where can I make decisions? And yeah, that that's a really important lesson for me, I think. That's great advice. Yes. Yeah. And then how did it happen for you when baby went home? Was it also, were you still like dealing with that, that same issue? Like, um, yeah. Transition. Yeah. I mean, one of the trickiest points I think in our experience at the NICU was the exit strategy, if you like, the going yes. home, at which point is baby ready to go home? And at this point, I must say, I felt a little bit frustrated by the support there because it felt a little bit like the nurses and the doctors were pulling in different directions. <laughs> like it felt like the doctor was being quite careful and cautious and conservative and keeping us in for longer. And the nurses were wanting us to go home because they could see that I was getting really tired of coming in there every day and they could see that my baby was doing well. So the last few weeks, it felt quite difficult to know, like, when are we ready to go home? It was all around breastfeeding, obviously. Once breastfeeding is fully established Mm -hmm. and you can breastfeed around the clock and your baby's gaining weight, then your baby can go home. But it was taking us a long time to reach that point and... 
yeah, it felt difficult. That's where, when the one nurse was like, this is your baby. Do you want to take your baby home? I'm like, yes, of course I want to take my baby home. But I don't know if we're really, yeah, yeah. The doctor's not ready. Yeah, so that was a bit tricky. But yeah, yeah we, we made, made it. And good. once we got home, it was yeah. very special. And we could have our newborn postpartum experience at home seven weeks yeah. later. <laughs> sure, well done. Yeah. Hey, what a journey. Um, can I also pick your brain? Um, we, we just had a, another interview for mental health and um, you actually had a trauma. You had a trauma, traumatic experience. Um, how, how did that work for you? How did you keep your mental health in a good space? Um, I think tapping into your support systems yeah. and expressing your needs was something that I, that worked for me. I think I'm, I guess in a way I'm, I'm lucky to be that kind of person who I'm not afraid to ask for help. Like I think a lot of people maybe amazing. are and my husband was amazing and I was able to tell him exactly what I needed when I needed it. My family was amazing. Um, our friendship circle, our social circle. Um, so I think very actively building your support system and using your support system is a really, really big thing. Yeah. Um, that was really helpful. Um, yeah. And I think also just focusing on the baby, like it's actually all about the baby. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that's where breastfeeding became a really, really important thing. Something I could do. That's a lot of preemie moms say that it's the one thing I can do is to, is to express milk and and to deliver to the hospital for it to be fed to my baby. So that was something to hold on to as well. Yeah, I can and imagine. to really focus on. Mm, yeah. I can imagine. Yeah. yeah. Sure, Jessica, what a journey. And also, sorry, one, can I just say one quick last thing about the mental health thing? Yes. We're very lucky to be able to see a psychologist at the hospital, also really yeah. good support in that way. And she helped us acknowledge that what we had gone through was a process of loss and that we were grieving. Even though our baby was healthy and we were fine, there was a loss of a lot of other things, a loss of yeah. expectations, a loss of, yeah. So that was also an important part of the process was to acknowledge that and to be okay with feeling really sad, <laughs> even though everything was okay. Yeah. yeah. It's emotions that you need to allow to come through, right? Yeah. 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 And to cry all the time and that it's fine to cry all yeah. the time. It's healthy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing us your story. That's um yeah, uh quite a story you had and it seems like you've come through it very well. And um I'm sure you are loving your baby so much because all the, all of that. Yeah, may you be healthy. And prosperous. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you. So nice that he's here with us in the interview. Thank you. Yeah, it's so special that he could be with us and he lasted all the way. He's quite yes. happy. He's someone who is an important story. He needs to um, allow you to tell it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I hope the audience doesn't mind that my picture's moving all the time. It's the oh, rock the baby. I, they can <laughs> identify with it. Trust me. Yes. <laughs> well, all the best for you, Jessica. And um, yeah, thanks, thanks so again. much, Marie. Yes. Take Thank care. You. Thank you. Okay, bye. Bye, bye. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you enjoyed this video, please share this with a friend who will benefit from this. And remember to subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you can be notified whenever we release new videos like this on our channel. We'd love to stay in touch and keep you updated with all our latest content and resources to equip and empower you. So if you're a midwife or any type of birth and baby worker, go to sensitivemidwifery.co.za slash free gift. If you're a mom, visit sisterlillian.co.za slash free gift for more training and resources. That way we can keep you up to date when we release new episodes like this plus a few other bonuses. You can also find the links I just mentioned in the show notes. Remember, you're making a big difference because you are shaping the future of humankind. Thanks for watching and I look forward to journeying with you. Pregnancy is a time of great change and excitement, but it can also be a time of uncertainty. The Sister Lillian Center Essential Antenatal Course will help you journey through your pregnancy better by arming you with the information you need to make informed choices about your health and well-being 
so you can have a healthy pregnancy experience and make the right choices for your birth. Click the link in the show notes or visit sisterlillian.co.za slash pregnancy to find out more about this invaluable course. And hey, if you're enjoying the content, remember to share this with a fellow mommy or friend.